We did not invent this world of black colleges, black churches, black funeral homes, black history museums, black radio stations, black TV, black newspaper, black awards shows, black labor unions. We did not invent that, but we have to live in it. Nor did we invent the hordes of enforcers who go around making sure people are fired, who speak out against this ridiculous racial consciousness that values race above individual merit. I mean, when you see these people on campuses and other places enforcing these politically, this politically correct uh, code enforcement, kind of reminds me of these imams on the streets of these Arab countries where they have a stick and if the woman is, is not wearing a burqa, no, nobody's stupid enough to do that. Or they're not wearing their burqa properly. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, elbow uncovered or wrist uncovered or something like that. They take a stick and they start beating them. That's the world we live in in this country. But now we have to wonder again, are there really two sets of rules? Well, check out this story about a black teacher in Oklahoma who said everybody in Oklahoma, all the crackers or hillbillies or what it, rednecks in Oklahoma, should die from a, from a tornado. And all of a sudden, the local TV news discovers the First Amendment and the Christian virtue of humility. But then let's take a look at four recent cases of white teachers, white public officials, doing the same thing with an entirely different result. Well, you know, last night's election had a lot of people sounding off on social media, but one particular post caught our eye. Tonight, a Metro teacher and coach is backing away from the explosive rant he posted on Facebook. New at 10, Steve Shaw spoke with that teacher and is live with his response. Steve? Kelly, teacher and coach Lamont Lowe went on his Facebook rant after Oklahoma voters approved a measure that basically bans affirmative action programs. Let's get right to Lamont Lowe's post. The second half says, I live in a state that hates me, hates women. Revoking affirmative action is spitting in my face. This is the reason I hate OU Sooners and the OKC Thunder and everything that represents this racist state. Die, Oklahoma. Hope a tornado blows away the Capitol and all the rednecks in it. An hour after we brought Lamont's paragraph of hate to the attention of the Oklahoma City School District, we got this response. OKCPS is very disappointed and saddened by the teacher's post. We do not agree with or support his comments, but we do recognize his First Amendment right to freedom of speech. Lamont Lowe is still a teacher and a volleyball coach, and he's supposed to be a role model at Southeast High School. So we stopped by after volleyball practice Wednesday to see if he'd cooled off. Lowe had gone home, but we showed his Facebook rant to a student. You had, did you have him in class? Yeah. Is he a good teacher? Yeah. Is he a good guy? Yes. Can you believe he wrote that? No. <laughs> this woman's daughter is a sophomore at Southeast. Die Oklahoma, what is he doing in Oklahoma? I hope a tornado blows away the Capitol and all the rednecks in it. Sorry, but he needs to go somewhere else. I love Oklahoma. I've been here for 25 years. We went to Lamont Lowe's house tonight, and while he refused to go on camera, we did, believe it or not, we had a very pleasant conversation. He said, quote, I don't hate Oklahomans. I was, it was a very, very bad choice of words, and I am sorry. And you know what? I believe him. I also believe Lamont just taught his students one of the most important lessons you can give your students, and that is about humility. Steve Shaw, News 9. So a black teacher says we should kill everybody in Oklahoma. Everybody pulls the First Amendment card and the Christian charity and humility card. What about this guy up in Boston? This just happened a couple days ago. There was a large party of a thousand black people that was creating enormous amounts of violence and mayhem near Boston. Firefighter gets back, tweets something about how, you know what, this kind of stuff happens a lot in black parties. Maybe we shouldn't let it happen. And he, of course, is fired. 
He didn't say he wanted to kill somebody. All he said was, if there's going to be a thousand black people in one place, can't we figure out a way that we can ask them not to cause an enormous amount of terror, trash, violence, mayhem, and chaos in the neighborhood? That's a firing offense. 25-year-old Kyle Grenier is no longer a Freetown firefighter. The chief terminated him after a series of offensive Facebook posts. In this thread, Grenier writes, I can see the next fire call will be this house on fire, and I'll make sure I can't find the hydrant, lol. And then writes, no more house parties with black Boston people. And I probably would have brought in the ladder truck with the deck gun and gave them all a bath on the way out. <laughs> Nearly a thousand people showed up a couple weekends ago at 18 Leonard Avenue in Asonet. Unless your neighbor Edward Quinn. This is a neighborhood, not a nightclub. Or this neighbor who did not want to go on camera. Do you like music and swearing and people fighting and urinating all over your land? They called Freetown police to complain. I couldn't sleep that night after that. By the time officers arrived early Sunday morning, they estimated close to a thousand people showed up. However, no arrests were made and no one was cited. We chose no injuries and no property damage to be our primary goals. But now Chief Carlton Abbott says the organizers are going to be charged. Disturbing the peace, keeping a disorderly house, and because uh, admission prices were charged, we're looking at the lack of an entertainment license. Complicating matters, Lochard's sister went on a Twitter rant mocking the police after the party. One of the tweets was uh, a, a brag about shutting down the town. The chief says Grenier served as a part-time firefighter for five years but says they are now moving on. I think it's too egregious of what he did. It can't be tolerated, he has to learn a lesson. A Texas elementary school teacher has been fired after writing on Facebook that she was almost in support of racial segregation following a controversial police incident in McKinney. Karen Fitzgibbons, a fourth grade teacher at Bennett Elementary School in Wolferth, lamented in a since deleted Facebook post about the Tuesday resignation of McKinney Police Corporal David Eric Casebolt. The officer was shown on video pointing his gun at two unarmed black teenagers and pinning a 15-year-old black girl clad in a swimsuit to the ground outside of a neighborhood pool in McKinney. In the post, Fitzgibbons blames African Americans for, quote, racial tension and suggests implementing segregation so, quote, they can hurt each other and leave the innocent people alone. Friendship Independent School District officials announced Fitzgibbons' termination Thursday afternoon. Reporting from ISA.com, I'm Joshua Fector. And how about this Fox sports reporter? She was doing some kind of analysis where she started repeating all these racial stereotypes about all these different racial groups. She was, she was pilloried in the public square and fired nary a word of the First Amendment, nary a word of Christian charity and humility. This happened a few months ago, but it's back in the news now. Uh, let me see, somebody took a automatic weapon to a big party full of hundreds and hundreds of black people, opened up, killed a bunch of people. How many did they kill? Five, six, seven? And uh, this news anchor said, you know what, well, we, you know, she kind of said, well, we kind of know who did it. You know, when's that going to stop? But then for the rest of the report, she went on to make the, all these fawning comments about black people and how... You know, they're all good, and some of them don't go around shooting people. They go around helping people. And, you know, the when you do the apology thing, when you apologize for noticing that black crime is wildly out of proportion, that's kind of like putting a target on your back. Anyway, she got fired for that. No First Amendment. No Christian charity. Just basically burn her at the stake and let everybody dance around and laugh. Oh yeah, she was doing okay until a bunch of black people went to the station manager and said, she's got to go. Every once in a while, somebody on this channel wants to know why there are so many black reporters covering black crime at these local TV stations. Well, I know just enough about this to be dangerous. But here's why. If you look at every local news website, if you look hard enough, sometimes it's on the front page down at the bottom, sometimes it's buried in the back. They all have to file um, an equal opportunity report where they describe what they are doing to A, hire black reporters, and B, uh, cover black stories. Then you have to file this with the Federal Communications Commission every year. It goes into a big file. You can walk into your station and demand to see that file right now. 
Some of them post it on the web. And, you know, every once in a while, not often, but every once in a while, somebody gets their license yanked for not doing enough to promote diversity and to promote black reporters and black, black stories. I was actually in the middle of one of those things a couple of years ago where a radio station lost their license. But when, where this gets to be a big deal is, is this. You know, they're all, you know, these big communications companies, right? They're always buying and selling stations, or whether it's radio or TV stations. Everybody's always consolidating. And you always have to go get permission to, to make that happen from the FCC and from a couple of Department of Justice. First thing they go to is that equal opportunity file. If that file is not in good shape. If there's a lot of things holding it up, that means the the merger, that means the sale is going to take a lot longer. That means the price of the station is going to go down. That means everybody involved, all the suits involved, black and white, decided in a very business-like fashion, they don't want that file full of complaints that that station is not doing enough to help black people as reporters and to do black stories. That's a plain fact that happens all the time. Paul Sperry of the Hoover Institute wrote a fantastic book about how this happens in other industries as well. There's a, there's a, uh, a he, he details it in his book, The Great Bank Robbery. So there was a CEO of a company called Ally Financial. They're making car loans and everything the financial people do now is hyper-regulated. So they're trying to make some kind of small change and they go to the regulators and the regulators say, well, what about your practice of discriminatory lending? They go, what the hell are you talking about? Well, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau ran some kind of bogus statistical analysis where they discovered that black people were being charged one or two or three percent more for their car loans. Now, there were, no, there, are nobody, there were no victims that came forward and said, yeah, these guys are ripping me off. No, they just did this, this crazy analysis based on names and zip codes where they didn't even know if the, the information they had was accurately reflecting if the person was black or Hispanic, but they ran it anyway. And they said, listen, unless you give us, what was the number, 70, 80, 100 million dollars, something like that, unless you agree to pay the fine to the Con Consumer Protection Finance Bureau, one of Elizabeth Warren's brain children, we're not gonna give you regulation, we're not gonna give you approval for your other stuff. So the guy said, okay, here's your money, give us the approval, they gave the approval, then they took this then they took this, this fine and they started showing it to all the other lending companies and they forced them to comply with these bogus racial rules. That's the nightmare scenario everybody in business wants to avoid. That's what's happening with so many television stations as well. The regulators are now out in force reminding everybody of the new number one rule of communications and reporting and who gets fired and who doesn't. That rule, rule number one is, of course, don't make the black kids angry. <laughs>